Okay, we're, we're assembled here today at the headquarters of Setco Life Clutch. Life Clutch is headquartered here in beautiful downtown Paris, Tennessee. This is our manufacturing and shipping facility from Life Clutches. What we'd like to do today is talk about how easy it is to install a Life Clutch and why a lot of shops, after they've installed the Life Clutch, refer to the Life Clutch as the mechanics clutch because of the ease of installation. What I'd like to show you first of all is a little comparison here. This is one of our major competitors in the instru instruction guide they give you as to how to install their clutch, which is not really of a high quality. We're very proud of the fact that Life Clutch has a complete illustrated installation guide step by step, which makes it extremely user friendly for the installer to install our clutch. When we get to the adjustment phase, we also have a separate brochure that could be obtained, which gets into very detailed instructions on how to adjust our clutch. We'll be showing the adjustment when we get finished with the actual installation. With that said, we're going to start the installation of the clutch, and of course, in order to build a solid house and a solid foundation, you always have to start with a flywheel that's been either properly resurfaced or renewed, and you always have to make sure you have a new pilot bearing or spigot bearing installed. We also like to install a couple 7 16 lineup dowels, or in the case of a Mac, 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter, excuse me. That helps the installation process. Now I'm going to ask my assistant, Gary Flood, come over and help me. One of the things we have is with every clutch we have a complete bolt kit that has all the necessary hardware for installing our clutch. Gary, if you'd move in here and help me with this. What Gary's going to do first is pick up the adapter ring that's going to go onto the flywheel first. One of the things we want to note about the adapter ring is there's a groove cut on the adapter ring. This groove is to fit very snug into the recess of the flywheel. If for some reason that adapter ring goes on the flywheel and does not fit snug, what's going to happen is the flywheel is going to be compromised and you're not going to get a good professional clutch job. Once the adapter ring is installed on the flywheel, we're going to install two Allen head screws, socket head screws, and there's two countersunk holes in our flywheel. What that's going to do is that's going to center and just retain that adapter ring until the clutch installation process is over. Those are installed in the adapter ring and they're torqued to 20 foot pounds of torque. Now again, when the adapter ring is set on the flywheel, if you have any kind of movement on the adapter ring to the flywheel, it means that someone has compromised the flywheel by cutting it, cut out the groove too excessively, and that's not a good foundation to work with. There's no way a positive clutch job can be obtained with a bad flywheel. And I think Gary's got that now. Now we do a step-by-step. -step. Once the flywheel is, the adapter ring has been properly placed in the flywheel, we want to make sure we look at the disc itself. The next step of our operation is going to be to install the flywheel disc. Now you'll notice that all our discs are marked. We have on here a flywheel side and if for some reason the tag would be to come off, you'd always look at the clutch itself. You've got a short, a long hub on one side and a short hub on the other. The long hub is always going to go to the flywheel or the pressure plate. Gary's now going to put that into the alignment shaft into the pocket bearing. Now we've installed the first phase of our clutch. We have our flywheel disc installed. The next step is going to be to put our intermediate plate, I mean, excuse me, our, our intermediate plate. On the intermediate plate, you want to make sure that the markings out here, the light clutch, the markings are visible to the installer on the transmission side of installing this. So Gary's going to install that now into the adapter ring. When he does this, he's going to make sure that it moves free in the lugs on the flywheel. It's not bound up in any way. And he's got movement in there. It moves free. The next step he's going to do is he's going to take out the alignment shaft 
and install the pressure plate disc. Now again, the pressure plate disc also is going to be marked pressure plate side, and again, it's long hub, short hub or no hub, the long hub is going to go to the pressure plate. Once the disc have been installed on the flywheel, the next step, and this is the most important step, with the competition's angle type clutch, basically you have to install the complete unit as a single piece. The single piece unit weighs approximately 150 pounds. The light clutch, our cover weighs just at 70 pounds, so Gary's going to now put the clutch cover on. You'll notice there's notches cut in the clutch cover. The notches in the clutch cover are going to correspond with the notches in the intermediate plate and the adapter ring. That's going to allow our immediate plate to float freely. And again, this is a relatively a one-man operation. It's easily installed, installed onto the input shaft, the line-up tool. And of course, he's going to line up his notches. Now we have a properly installed pressure plate onto the flywheel. At that time, we're going to install the, at this time, we'll install eight bolts finger tight. Remember, we have two Allen screws in there, so we're going to only have eight bolt holes available. We have two alignment studs and two Allen screws. So we have the eight bolts to put our clutch on the, the flywheel and secure it properly. Now again, we have more bolts than the competition using only eight bolts and the standard angle inks clutch assembly. These need to be tightened finger tight all the way around equally. And then we'll start, once they're finger tight, we'll start tightening them down and across what we call the star pattern, one side to the other, back and forth until all the bolts are secured. After the bolts are secured, we'll go ahead and remove our two alignment studs and install the last two bolts. For the demonstration purposes, we just talk you through that process. It will only take an extra couple minutes. We're just going to go ahead and tighten the clutch down. Again, the clutch cover itself is going to be torqued down to 50 to 55 foot-pounds of torque. Now, as you can see, just installing the clutch cover itself, being only 70 pounds, takes a lot of wear and tear and fatigue off the operator the installer putting the clutch in. Basically, the clutch cover itself on a light clutch is about equivalent to the weight of a standard 15 and a half inch flywheel. So anywhere you can take the flywheel out and have it resurfaced and put it back in and torque it down, it's very easy to do the same operation putting the clutch onto the fixture and installing the clutch assembly. Gary's just about done putting the bolts down now. He's going to get all the bolts torqued down. Very important you torque them down equally. You want a good foundation job. We're doing very good getting them all torqued properly. Okay. After the clutch bolts have been torqued properly, the next step is to remove the alignment shaft. Now, a little trick on removing the alignment shaft, gravity is going to pull down slightly on the pressure plate disc, so I always like to say just give it a little upward pressure. We're going to release the clamping bolt. 
Now these clutches all have three clamping bolts to retain them. They compress the springs while the clutch is ready for assembly without having these clamping bolts in there. The pressure on the pressure plate would be 40, 150 pounds of torque. This happens to be a light one clutch. There's no way you could possibly install the clutch pressure plate onto the flywheel with the, without the flywheel being properly caged. Once the caging bolts have been removed, Gary's going to go ahead and remove the input shaft. Now one nice thing about that, one the alignment shaft when you get ready to put her in here, hang on one minute Gary. What we're going to show you is looking at this because of our open construction of the light clutch, you can actually see the spines of the pressure plate disc. So when your input shaft is going to come through your throw bearing, you're going to actually be able to see if you're high or low when you're going to put your transmission in. Now from this point, what we want to do is we're going to take and we're going to put a light coat of grease on our transmission shaft. A light, and what I like to use is an anti-seize compound, just a light coating. And on this inside bushing here, I like to put a light coating of a good lithium high temperature grease for installation purposes. Along with that, we're going to put a tab of high temperature lithium grease on the back of our throw out bearing where our fork is going to make contact with the back of our throw out bearing. Now with that, we're about ready to start the installation of the transmission itself or stabbing the transmission. One thing we you always do, always do with a light clutch is we always use nothing but a standard size clutch brake. You never need an oversized clutch brake with a light clutch because of the unique adjusting procedure on the throw bearing. Now we're going to go ahead and install our. I'm going to give Gary a hand here. Install our transmission. This will be the part that will probably be cut out of the actual. <coughs> okay, and then we're going to install our bolts, bring our flywheel transmission into place. and most of you are used to it. It's a lot easier doing it this way than under a truck with hydraulic lines, air tanks, a lot of other fixtures in the way. We just want to show you that it's, it's not that difficult installing the clutch on the flywheel and then installing the transmission, being able to see the spines on the alignment shaft as we go together. Okay, we've got the transmission properly installed now. We've got our cross shaft. The other thing we want to make sure of is our cross shaft is good and snug. There's no play in our bushings, and that's going to be the determining factor. If the bushings are installed too tightly into the bell housing, it's going to cause an extra pedal effort on your clutch. All right, from there we're going to go into the actual adjustment procedure and show you how easy this clutch is to adjust. Okay. Now according to our adjustment procedure, we have number one, every clutch comes with our tool. 
It's our clutch adjusting tool, which is nothing more than a half inch rod, 16 and a half inches long. The reason for a half inch rod is a half inch rod is always the dimension that goes between the clutch brake and throw out bearing. That's your initial adjustment on all pull type clutches. So what we want to do is make sure we've got our proper half inch gap. Seems like this one here is a little bit loose right now, so we want to take and take a little bit of our adjustment out on our throw out bearing. In order to do that, we have a lock nut closest to the flywheel, closest to the pressure plate itself. What we're going to do is we're going to loosen that lock nut. Just a two pound hammer, loosen it slightly. The second nut, right behind the throw out bearing, is welded to the threaded shaft. And what we're going to do is we're going to thread that shaft one or two notches. Now this is a special bell housing we've cut away for the video. You're going to be operating from the small access under the bottom, but we get the same results. There's still a little loose there, so we want to tighten it up just a little bit more. And we keep turning the clutch. We're getting very close. Okay, it looks like we've obtained our half inch, we're good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our second nut, thread it back against our star on our pressure plate. Now to lock that firmly all it takes is a ball peen hammer and a sharp blow with a ball peen hammer, a pound or two pound hammer, one jar. Now your clutch is properly adjusted. It's the easiest, fastest adjustment on a clutch of anything in the market. Nobody has to bump the starter to bring the adjuster around to where you have access. Nobody has to hold the clutch pedal down in order for you to get the clutch assembly freed up so you can make your adjustment. The other thing about our life clutch with our adjustment the way it is, we show you on our brochure our clutch, right now if you're looking at it in there, this flywheel has been turned. We have just a little bit, probably 3 eighths to a half inch between our adjusting nuts, which is fairly common with a new clutch that's been installed in a flywheel that's been turned. As you can see, we can turn that threaded shaft on our throw out bearing out all the way to an inch and 5 eighths if necessary. When it gets out past about one, one and a quarter inches, you want to start thinking about now is the time to think about doing a clutch replacement job. Now one of the great, great things about that is, is your linkage is always going to go back to the manufacturer's original equipment position where they want the clutch when it was actually manufactured as a new truck. So you don't have to shorten or lengthen the clutch to compensate for a flywheel housing that's been cut excessively. And with that, that is how easy it is to install and adjust a live clutch on a vehicle today. We want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and hope it's been very informative and informational for you.